people are supposed to cook, cook lunch, they bailed on them anyway, so they stepped up to do it, and so Mandy and Ethan are going to go help them uh, cook for those folks. They usually serve around two to 500 people um, a day, so it's a, it's a very, very busy hub there, and that's why I'm sending the rest of those supplies with you guys. Hope you're ready. Um, and then if the next thing that's going to happen is Jeremy with Mark and Mark and Karina, they're, so um, as y'all know, Jeremy can't lift a whole lot. So they are actually, we have a church that is um, a couple miles from where we're gonna be working that someone has already mucked out and torn everything down, but they just need to go in and spray the entire, um, all the walls and everything down with mold and mildew cleaner. So that's what they're gonna do. And then they are going, and Mark is, uh, Mark, you're gonna be traveling with them because the, the, the wasp nest is like right, like two blocks or a block from, they're block up from the church so that we don't get separated. Um, you guys will go to the house first, go ahead and tackle that. Hopefully that wasp nest is empty because my contact said that um, she didn't see any activity or hear any activity when she took pictures. So hopefully it's gonna be easy breezy. And then you guys can go to the church, spray it down and then bring all the supplies that are at the church, bring those with you. There's a mold and mildew cleaner. So whatever you don't use, just pack that up and bring it with you. I don't know if we will get as far as mildew spray um, at the house that we're doing today. Uh, but if so, then we'll need those supplies. Okay. Uh, make sure you have PPE. It's up to you to decide if you want to wear it. Um, masks, gloves, boots, anything of that nature. As far as the PPE, use your own best judgment. Any questions? You guys are awesome. It's going to be a dirty day. It's going to be a hard day, but it's going to be a fun day. So I'm up here in Avery County, North Carolina, and I'm getting ready to meet the principal of Riverside Elementary School. You guys may have remembered that school from some of our first videos where we kind of non-formally um, adopted that school to help them with some things uh, throughout the school year. And one of the things that we are helping them with is get coats for all the children in that school. So the Carolina Z Club um, is a club that Jeremy has been a member of for a little while and um, they stepped up and donated 60 coats. Uh, so I'm meeting the principal um, at one of the stores here so that I can offload those um, to them and she can sort them and then let us know what other coats they need once we get these sorted out to all the kids. So we are hoping these guys are just sleeping or, or not sleeping. We're hoping they're gone and not just sleeping. So uh, our, our trusty volunteer, Mark, is gonna, is gonna do what he does and get this thing gone. You guys, we got lucky. No bees were here. We finished the hornet's nest. And so this is the Tow River. And I just wanna show you how high the Tow River had to have gotten because it flooded this church the entire bottom level so it went to that black mailbox so that river had to do a lot of growing to get up there and you can see it even twisted some of the, the train stuff so when you look at this house right here and you wonder how they get over there let me show you how they got over there it is now gone All right, let's go clean out a church. See, this is the Totem Church, and we're just going through here, spraying everything we can. Here's a mold and mildew cleaner to try to keep this area that got wet from molding. So we just finished cleaning out the church. We are heading over to where Kim and the rest of the group is to muck out the house. Guys, this house, this house was completely submerged. And these volunteers are just gutting out from all the water damage. So, so this, this restores all my faith in humanity. This is 
Saturday and all these people are volunteers. And this is the water line. So that's an eight foot doorway and you see this. So we just heard that the owner of the house had to go out that back window to get out of here because all of a sudden he felt his house raise up and move. Look at the amount of mud that's been shoveled out of that, out of the windows. It is just, I can't imagine this happening and having to live through this. It's just terrible. All right, what are we showing them? The amount of mud that got inside the walls and that's just resting on the foundation. It's just crazy. So it feels just, I mean, just right here, just handfuls of mud just resting inside there. So guys, this is what we need up here right now. Not supplies, not that nice. stuff. We need people to come up here and help like this. These people, the only way that they can potentially get back into their homes is to get this out of here and then set up dehumidifiers and try to help it to dry out and then potentially all that is made. and potentially get back in their homes or rebuild their homes. But all this has got to come out. Door open about that far, and I look around and in, and there lays my guitar and my mandolin, that side by side, just like this, just laying. And I get in, and I go over to the door, and, and I mean the guitar, and I'm, I'm looking at it, and it looks just like you see everything come out of the house. Yeah, everything's trashed. It's mud. I open up the guitar. Nothing, nothing. Perfect. Perfect. What kind of guitar is it? It's a Taylor 310. I open up the man, perfect, nothing in it. That is crazy. If you see anything in that house, <laughs> everything in that house is mud. The mud is even between all of the studs. Wow. We thought this was a two by four, but look at that. That is mud. Packed in there like it was there all along. Crazy. So you just gotta take this whole house to the skeleton. I mean, it's... That is unreal. And this house was only flooded for about 24 hours. So all of that got in there in just that amount of time. And there were probably three pieces of wall in front of that, different paneling and sheet rock. All right, guys, I wanna show you what all we got done today. All the walls are down. Um, this is the main room that we didn't touch yet. It's because it had this beautiful tongue and groove paneling. Um, so they're getting the floor up. But yeah, so a lot of progress for one day. I'll show you through here. This room was the worst. Um, they're taking the floor out right now. One of the final rooms. And here is the worst. So the floor joist just completely buckled under the weight. So, but we got everything off the walls so that this can start airing out. And uh, all this floor will have to come up as well. Basically, this house is gonna be taken all the way down to the skeleton. So, but ton of progress today with amazing volunteers. So, guys, if you're watching this and you're interested in something like this, please reach out to us. We can find jobs for you to do um, and just give these people some hope and uh, take a little bit of the burden off their shoulders. So, guys, when you're sitting at home and you think you have it so tough, you have it so bad, just look at all this and remember you have so much to be thankful for. And, uh, you know, Mike, that's Mike up there. He's still got a positive attitude. He's ready to get this done. He's ready to move forward and ready to rebuild. Um, so just, you've got a lot to be thankful for and remember that. 
This is such beautiful work. It's so amazing. And uh, I hope that you all have a chance to help somebody that needs it. Probably gonna be the thumbnail for this video, just so you know. Everybody's up dirty. <laughs> if you can't see somebody, just tell them. So we just finished uh, up at Mike's house. We got the volunteers dropped off at the meeting point. Um, so our cooking team, apparently they've done so well uh, serving brunch and everything that they're staying and serving dinner now. So um, those guys are basically pulling an all dayer for sure. Um, we got the wasp nest taken care of for the individual. Luckily there were no bees in it, so it didn't take long. We got the church all sprayed down underneath with uh, mold and mildew uh, cleaner so that it's not gonna mold. So once that airs out, it should be good. So then we went over to Mike's house and I'll tell you guys, we've done a lot of these trips now, but this was the most hard hitting for me because you can see the devastation as you drive and, you know, delivering food door to door is, is you know, rewarding and, but you don't see the, the damage and you don't see the turmoil and how it's changing their lives. But going into Mike's house and basically gutting it to the skeleton, I mean, this gentleman is, is in his late 50s. He thought he was done with, with life at this, you know, trying to do things like rebuilding homes and finding a place to live. He's lived there for 34 years, and now everything in that home is, is gone. And so seeing that turmoil, is it does something to you, and, and you really feel guilty for, for being okay and, and not having this happen to yourself. But Mike, even seeing that he's lost everything and he's starting all over from scratch and that he's gonna be living in a camper for six months, he was so positive and had such a great attitude and just kept saying, you know, we'll just rebuild. And I mean, think about it, it's been five weeks since the hurricane. He's had five conversations with FEMA and they still haven't come out to look at his house. And, you know, I would be all to pieces about that and down in the dump and griping and bitching. But he says, you know, they'll do what they can do and I'm just gonna keep trying to do what I can do until then. Um, so it's a great attitude to have. But guys, this plea is, is to keep you engaged. We need volunteers to do this kind of work. And, Giving donations is great, but that is not what they need right now. They need help. These people, some people don't have a whole lot of friends. They don't have huge connections. They kind of live out, out of the way. So they need volunteers to give them help. Um, so please consider doing this because I promise you, all of us want to say that we lived a life that changed somebody else's life or that made the world a better place than it was before we were there. And I promise you, one day up here, Doing something like we did today gives you that feeling. I know that we changed Mike's day. I know that we made his day better, a day that would normally suck. I know that we made it better. And honestly, I know that all these seeing all these volunteers come from all over gave him a better outlook for the week and the months to come ahead because he knows that he's not gonna be alone. We're not gonna leave him alone. We're gonna stay in contact and get this man what he needs if we are able. Mike also wanted his story on YouTube uh, because he wanted to make sure people saw the volunteers. So that was pretty neat because we, again, we don't film the people, um, but uh, he, he wanted us to. So uh, remember these videos where we are donating all the monetization for them. So please share them uh, because that's just somebody else we can help. And uh, that's it guys. Thanks for watching this journey. Thank you. We'll see you next time.